case you guys say something in the background. I don't know. You'd be chiming in. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, welcome to the History of Downingtown Football live stream here on April the 5th, 2020. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, the greatest linemen in the history of Downingtown Football. And uh, we're testing out some new uh, broadcasting stuff, some new equipment. So I don't know how the video quality is going to be, don't know how the audio quality is going to be. So I appreciate you staying with me and we figure this out together. Uh, first, we want to talk about probably the most decorated lineman in the uh, older era of Downingtown football, 1951, and we're going to go through the all-state players first uh, who have played on the line. First is Joe Rodi, 1951, he was all-state. He also, in 1951, is the only lineman that I'm aware of who... Uh, uh, the only lineman I'm aware of who ever won the league most valuable player. He won what was called in 1951, the Jock Sutherland award. And it wasn't just for the most valuable lineman. It was most valuable player in the league. He played both sides of the ball, offense and defensive line. So that's Joe Rodi. He went on to play at North Carolina state. He was, he won an all ACC title in 1957 and was first team all ACC in 1958. Next up on our greatest lineman, All-State 1959, Lamar Howe. Uh, Lamar, uh, one of the greatest linemen of his era, no doubt. Uh, he was All-Chesmont in 57, 58, and he was All-State in 59. Uh, so there's Lamar Howe, also an All-State player from Downingtown, playing on both the offensive and defensive line back in the day. The next All-State player. Uh, and he was a defensive lineman. And interestingly enough, you'll see him here. This is Paul Nicholson from 1972. He was the All-State player, and he made it playing defensive end. And this was in an interesting era of football where we had a coach's Chesmont, Chesmont team, a writer's Chesmont team, and then there was just another Chesmont team that was sort of a mishmash of both. And there would be people who would not make a particular team, but at the same time, Get all state honors. And Paul Nicholson was one of those guys who received all state honors and did make all Chesmont in both the coaches and uh, the press 1972 team. So there's Paul Nicholson, a defensive end, your next uh, player, next all state player on the uh, line here in the history of Downingtown football. In case you've just joined in on the stream, tonight we're talking about. Uh, the greatest lineman in the history of Downingtown football, and we're also talking about the, first the All-State lineman. Uh, 1976, Jesse Hamilton was named to the All-State team. The 1976 team, if you were listening to the stream last night, definitely a legendary squad, and Jesse definitely a legendary player. Many members of his family uh, played football for Downingtown, uh, and, and the, Jesse's 1976 season, along with a bunch of the other linemen who we'll talk about a little bit later, it was a tremendous year for them, and Jesse received all state honors in 1976. Uh, our next lineman, the most decorated lineman, uh, other than Joe Rodi, who we started talking about, uh, than Joe Rodi, the most decorated lineman in the modern era of Downingtown football, Paul Seaver, who was first team All State in 1986. He was also our first uh, Big 33 player uh, and, and also was a parade All American. So there's Paul Seaver. He went on to play at Penn State. He was a number three draft pick by the Washington Redskins. Um, and uh, there he is. He came back and he was a coach for many years here within our school district as well. The greatest lineman of our modern era, Paul Seaver, 1986 All-State. 1990 All-State was Chris Kennedy. Uh, Chris then went on uh, after being a first-team All-Stater, went on to play football at Rutgers, and then also was in the training camp for the New York Giants as well. Uh, Chris, no doubt, one of the greatest players to ever suit up for Downingtown High School, uh, a, a, a mountain of a man, uh, a great player. There's Chris Kennedy, All-State, 1990. 
1996. You, we move on, and when you win the state championship, you have a pretty good shot of having people on the All-State team, and our, uh, we certainly did from Downingtown High School in 1996. Uh, Trent Chandler uh, was a first-team All-Stater, 1996, one of the anchors on the line uh, for the Downingtown Whippets in their 1996 title. There he is, All-State 1996, Trent Chandler. Our next All-State player, also from 1996, the tight end, Mike Millard. Now, Mike, uh, and, and for those of you who don't know, I, I used to coach offensive line back in the day, and as far as I was concerned, the tight ends were always part of the line. So here we are, Mike Millard, 1996, part of that legendary team, uh, a great season, a great player, a great blocker, a Great offensive weapon as well, Mike Millard, All State, 1996, and then in the same in the same mode, uh, in the same mold, in 2000, Keith Carter was was a first team All Stater as well from Downingtown High School. Keith went on to play at UCLA. He's been a coach in the NFL for seven seasons, and among his seven seasons, in 2013, he was a member of the staff for the Seattle Seahawks that won the Super Bowl that year, and Keith is the only player to date, and I say that to date because I'm sure we're going to have some more, uh, who's won a Super Bowl with Downing, he's from, with Downingtown uh, Roots. So there's Keith Carter, All-State in 2000. In 2001, All-State A.J. Mitchell. Uh, AJ, another, as you can see, a great picture, uh, another another force to be reckoned with on the line. AJ went on to play college football at Syracuse University. And again, another mountain of a man, another uh, force to be reckoned with, AJ Mitchell, All-State, 2001. We then go, we have a, a run of offensive linemen developed uh, out by Coach Matta at Downingtown East, offensive and defensive linemen. Uh, in 2009, Taj Alexander uh, received All-State honors. Taj went on to play college football at Rutgers, uh, was a starter on the offensive line. He, and as a senior, he won the academic award at, at, at Rutgers for the football squad. Again, another mountain of a man, a, a, another force to be reckoned with, Taj Alexander, uh, 2009 All-State. Uh, also from the Downingtown East, Pat Restrepo, uh, 2010 All-Stater. Pat went on to play college football at Holy Cross, and the picture here that you're seeing is a picture of Pat uh, from his Holy Cross football playing days. One of the very few, and again, if you're just new, dro dropping onto the stream, we're talking about the greatest lineman in the history of Downingtown football, and we're first going through the All-State performers. And so now we get to uh, our first two-time All-State performer on the line, tight end Kerry Angeline. Uh, Kerry was an uh, uh, All-State tight end in both 2014 and 2015. Kerry is currently playing at North Carolina State University. He earned all ACC honors this past fall. Uh, and, and again, one of the very few players in the history of Downingtown football to be named or receive All-State recognition two times, 2014 and 2015, Kerry Angeline. Also receiving All-State honors uh, was Mike Clark. Mike is currently at Syracuse University. Mike also was a big 33 player. Uh, Mike, uh, a force to, again, to be reckoned with, a, a very large human being, a guy who could push some people around, and quite a, quite a football player, and, and really an unbelievable high school football player. I think at, at Syracuse, uh, again, I hope that, uh, that this next season shows Mike getting a lot more time up there, a great player, a great young man, uh, Mike Clark, 2015 All-State. Uh, 2017, another Downingtown East lineman, Carter Raggetts. Um, Carter, I don't know that there's enough words to give praise properly to Carter. I, I just remember watching his film, and literally it seemed that every play for Downingtown East went through Carter. Everybody knew it, and Carter still would crumple people and open up holes and give running lanes over and over and over again. I mean, it was unbelievable watching him on film. Uh, uh, there's not enough praise to give to this young man, a tremendous high school football player, all state in 2017. I believe that Carter is playing rugby at James Madison. Uh, and again, if anybody has any more information on anybody here or wants to chime in, please send, uh, pl please send some notes on that. But again, Carter Regas, 2017, all state. 
Also, all state, uh, another Downingtown East Lime in 2017, Connor Munnelly. Uh, Connor's presently playing at Westchester University, plays on the defensive line. He's a defensive tackle, defensive end. Uh, again, another, as you can see in the picture that's shown here, there was a guy that just could not be blocked, especially on the, def I mean, playing defensive line in high school. He, he was in the play, literally every play. A tremendous player, Connor Munnelly, uh, uh, 2017 All-State. This past year, 2019, uh, there's different different types of all state teams at this point. There still remains uh, the writers uh, all state team, and then there's the coaches select all state team. And this past year, Sean Pelkison, a defensive end and tight end from Downingtown West, received all state honors by that coaches select team. Uh, and here you see Sean with a with the uh, District One title uh, uh, trophy hoisted. Sean Pelkson had a tremendous season on both sides of the football. Uh, he's going to be at Georgia Southern. He's a Georgia Southern commit next year. Also earning all state honors on that coaches select team was Bo Bryant. Uh, Bo is going to be uh, Bo was a tremendous two way performer on both the offensive and defensive line this year. Uh, again, another force to be reckoned with. Uh, he was a uh, he he was a difficult difficult man to block on the defensive line and also was the key to one of the really keys to success on the offensive line for Downingtown West this year. Uh, he's a Millersville commit and uh, he'll be playing at Millersville next year. So that's the, those are the all state performers in the history of Downingtown football. There's several people then who made the big 33 team even though they didn't make all state. And I'm not here to try to explain why the politics of that. 2002, Brandon Darlington uh, was on the big 33 team. Brandon went on to play uh, at Syracuse University. He was a letterman for two of the two of the, of the four years he was there. Uh, he, I think, to take that back, I think it was three out of the four years he was there. Uh, he played tight end principally at Syracuse. Uh, this is a person that if you were on the opposing team, you did not want to be across from him or on the other side of the ball. Uh, this was somebody who would put you on your wallet uh, and he would make some plays on the field as a tight end as well. A tremendous, tremendous player. He's a coach now, I believe, out in New Mexico. Uh, one of the friends, true friends of the history of Downingtown football, uh, Brandon Darlington, 2002, uh, Big 30, all Big 33 player. Uh, 2011, we had Tyler Croft as a Big 33 player. Uh, Tyler's gone on, as most of you know, to not only be a star at Rutgers in his undergrad years, but he's also gone on to play in the NFL. He's currently with the Buffalo Bills. And if you saw the 2019 recap that we put up on our website, uh, you'll see that you know Tyler with his game-winning catch at the end of last season uh, to, to lead the Bills in the playoffs and to beat the Steelers in Week 15. Tyler Croft, 2011, all Big 33 team. In 2013, uh, Elijah Wilkinson from Downingtown West was a Big 33 selectee. Uh, Elijah went on to play at UMass in college, and he's currently uh, in the NFL playing for the Denver Broncos. Again, if you watched or took a look at our blog post for the 2019 season, you'll see there's some interesting interview in there from Elijah. Elijah was principally a defensive lineman in high school, and now he's an offensive lineman. He was started 12 games at right tackle for the Denver Broncos last year. Again, another mountain of a man, a tremendous force to be reckoned with in high school football, and now in the pros, uh, Elijah Wilkinson. 2017, also making the Big 33 team with Shane Hogarth. Shane, um, I, I, there's, there's not even enough words to say what kind, of, what kind of quality individual Shane is, as well as what a great football player he is. Shane uh, originally committed to Delaware. He had some injury problems. He's now at Temple. He plays on the defensive line at Temple. And I was fortunate enough to see Shane get in the game last year uh, when they played Bucknell to be there present. Uh, again, a tremendous guy. I still think that the, the future is bright for Shane at Temple. We're looking forward to great things from him. 2017, Big 33 player Shane Hogarth. Now, there's some people, uh, certainly in the history of downtown football, who weren't recognized all state and weren't recognized as a big 33 player, but still were unbelievable football players. And we're going to try to, to touch on as many of those here before we wrap up this live stream. Uh, we're going to go way back. We're going to go back to 1936. In the middle of the screen right there, uh, kneeling, is Charles Razor. 
Uh, Charles uh, went on to play. He played. This is a 1936 Downingtown High School Whippets team. Uh, he's in the middle there. He went on to play at Penn State, uh, play college football at Penn State. In this era, uh, an unbelievable accomplishment to be on the field uh, for Penn State. And there's Charles Razor from the early days of Downingtown football. From also from the same era. Clarence Wilkerson. Clarence was on the teams from 38 to 40 that were that were in essence undefeated uh, during those three that three year stretch. Uh, Clarence was one of the offensive linemen for Francis Tweed and was and was a player all of those years. Uh, a tremendous person from the early days of our football. A tremendous football player, Clarence Wilkerson. Well, when you go undefeated that number of seasons in a row, you're going to have some good linemen, and not just one. And here's another one, Julian Jarafalco. Uh, Julian was an all-suburban selection uh, in 1938, and he was a first-team all-suburban selection. So you're talking about the entire Delaware Valley. Uh, this uh, Julian Jarafalco from little then very little Downingtown High School, first-team all-suburban lineman. Uh, and again, a great Downingtown uh, tradition uh, of linemen. And you want to look back to where it started with people that play end. And you, you heard previously a bunch of tight ends in this, in this string of all, straight and, all state and big 33 players. This is where it started with Julia Jarafalco back in 1938. We, we move forward to the 40s. Another all-suburban player from 1940 was Paul Tellerico. Uh, Paul, uh, uh, again, this was a, he played, from the best I can tell, varsity football for four seasons at Downingtown High School. Uh, Paul was a force, and again, to be an all-suburban player in that era at the small school that Downingtown was, which the, the all-suburban area took in all the Philly schools and all the surrounding suburbs, a tremendous accomplishment, Paul Tellerico, 1940. Uh, we, we jump forward to the end of the 50s because we had some, some great players, Joe Rodi and Lamar Howe. If you've been in here watching us, we're talking about the greatest lineman in the history of Downingtown football. If you're joining us late, here's uh, you missed some of the previous players who were all state from the 50s. Here's one of the players who was all Chesmont, um, 1957 and 58, I believe. It's Dave DG, D, Dave D. Eugenio. Uh, sorry, Dave. I know you're probably watching on there, so I apologize for getting the name wrong. Dave was a tremendous player on tremendous teams. The 57 to 58 teams were back-to-back -back Chesmont champs for Downingtown, and Dave was one of the uh, one of the stalwarts of the of the line. And there's Dave D. Eugenio, uh, all Chesmont, uh, 1958. There's only been several players who've been named uh, who were linemen who were named all Chesmont two different seasons, and Bob Carl here is one of them. And in 1964, uh, his last season with the Whippets. Bob was first team all Chesmont in both the offensive and the defensive line. And there's Bob Carl, his picture from 1964, a tremendous player. Also a two-time all Chesmont lineman. Uh, here shown in a 1965 picture is Daniel Phipps. So Daniel there wearing number 74. Another, like when you look at the you look at the lineup, not the biggest guy on the field. But looking at some of the film from back in the day, certainly one of the toughest guys on the field, and it's testament to the fact that he was a two-time All Chesmont lineman. There's Daniel Phipps from 1965, and at the other end of the tail of the tape, one of the biggest guys of his era, Doug Gindon, another one of the great tight ends in Downingtown football history. Uh, Doug is possibly the the greatest three-sport athlete in our before the split for sure. Uh, before the split, one of the greatest athletes in the history of Downingtown. Uh, he was a three-sport performer. He played baseball. He was a Chesmont scoring champion in basketball, and here he is pictured in football as well. Doug went on to play tight end for the University of Pittsburgh. And if you take a look at some of the blog posts from uh, the history of Downingtown football, you'll be able to see some film of Doug playing uh, for the Pitt Panthers. Everybody also knows that he came back to Downingtown and was a teacher for, very, for many years. He, he coached many sports in Downingtown, one of the, one of the really the great people and personalities in the history of Downingtown football. There he is, Doug Gindon. Going to 1970, uh, in 1969 and 69 and 70, Terry Miller was a first team all Chesmont performer on both offense and defense. He had a second team defensive nod, which I am trying to figure out who the person was who voted for him for second team. He not only was all Chesmont two different times, 69 and 70, 
but he was on both sides of the ball, was first team. This is truly one of the toughest, toughest men that ever has played in, in worn the blue and gold uniform. If you were w- watching yesterday uh, on the history, there was some uh, discussion uh, about uh, some of the old trap drills with uh, Terry and the younger guys in, wearing the sumo suits. Terry was a tough, tough football player. And there is some film of, the, of this time period up uh, on our YouTube po- uh, blog uh, post. And uh, what you can do is you can go watch Terry play some football. And if you watch, uh, you, you watch some, uh, some football, and I'm just checking in to make sure that we don't have any technical problems. I see some people who are chiming in here. And just give me a second while I take a quick look. Um, but, the, uh, but Terry here, uh, really, one again, one of the toughest players in the history of downtown football. Go watch the film. You can grade the film yourself. He's unbelievable. He's a wrecking ball in the field. Terry Miller, 1969-1970, two-time all, all Chesmont. Then rolling forward, we saw this picture yesterday, if you were with us doing the live stream, the 1976 big defense on the right-hand side of this picture is Jesse Hamilton was all state. Also on that front was uh, Michael Madrigal, who was wearing number 68 in this picture, and Tony Chelly, 54. This was, again, one of those ones where it was very, very an anomaly with the all Chesmon team with coaches, all Chesmon team with the uh, press, and then you go to all state. Uh, Jesse earned all state honors. It very easily could have been all state honors for all three of these guys, for Chelly and for Madrigal. Um, they all made uh, they all made all Chesmon and in different levels. Curiously enough, um, with Madrigal, I think believe being a first teamer uh, and Jesse being an honorable mention, which is just crazy. But these guys were just some very very tough individuals. A great team in 1976: Madrigal, Chelly, and Hamilton. We pop forward to the. Only undefeated, untied season in the history of Downey Town football, which was 1985. Uh, along with Paul Seaver, who we talked about a little bit earlier, if you were uh, along for our broadcast, here's Mike Drill. He's wearing number 76. Mike was on that offensive line, a stalwart, also a wrestler. Mike has uh, been a longtime teacher and coach, uh, returning after his, uh, after his high school days to his hometown. Uh, Mike was a force on the line. Uh, and, and there's again, he was an all suburban selection uh, in 1985. Uh, there's number 76, Mike Drill. Uh, from 19, also from 1989, an all suburban winning all suburban honors was Tom Wickersham. Tom was a uh, four year player. He was he he was with the varsity for four years, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grade. Tom, Tom was a, another guy who was a tough, tough guy on the offensive and defensive line. Tom went on to play uh, football at Fordham University. And, and again, you have a Division I football player, an all-suburban selection, and then Tom has returned. Uh, he was a coach uh, on the 1996 state championship team. He's been with, with the staff for many, many years at Downingtown West and is, is probably one of the most well-known players in the history of Downingtown football. 1989 all-suburban, Tom Wickersham. Then we roll forward to 2000, the 2000 squad. You had Dave Gracia. Dave was also an all-suburban uh, selection. Dave went on to play at the University of Richmond. Uh, Dave was a, he was a tough guy. There's just no way around it. He was a quiet giant, but a very, very tough individual on the football field. All suburban honors, all Chesmon honors. And he went on and had an outstanding career at the University of Richmond, playing on the defensive line. And he was also in 2001, uh, the Valor Bowl after the 2000 season. Dave was the MVP for the defense, uh, Dave Gracia. And then last but certainly not least, uh, probably one of the greatest supporters, one of the greatest people in the history of Downingtown football, a lineman, James Chunky Clunk. Uh, Chunky recently passed away. Chunky, uh, there's not even enough words to be able to say how, uh, how special this individual is, uh, what a great person he is, what he's meant to so many people in the history of Downingtown football. And uh, today would have been Chunky's, I believe, 71st birthday. So we wish you a 71st ha- happy heavenly birthday, Chunk. And we couldn't talk about Lyman and Downingtown and not mention you. 
So there it is. I, I appreciate you all joining in. Hopefully there weren't any technical glitches this time. You got to see all of the photos in the background and you enjoyed this live stream uh, concerning the, the greatest lineman in the history of Downingtown football. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll talk to you again uh, when we have the next topic. Thank you so much from the history of Downingtown football.